So Cliff Richard, yes. it's another to meet you. Thank you. Pleasure. Um, being the biggest selling artist of, uh, of the UK of all time, sold over 250 million records, do you feel that there's anything left to, to achieve, really? Yeah, another 50 million would be good. <laughs> <laughs> it's, no, I mean, in a, any kind of uh, creative art, whether it be painting or dancing or singing or acting or whatever, you never really quite ach achieve what you want. I mean, we all want to be perfect to what we do, and I guess none of us are going to actually be that. But it means that there's always something ahead that you can think, oh, I can do that better. I can make a different album, I can make a better album, I could do a better show. And as, as yet, I've never got to that point where I think to myself, oh, well, that's it. Where do I go from here? I've always got something in my mind to follow whatever I've just done. Sure, sure. Um, I saw you on Graham Norton the other, the other evening. And oh, said that, yeah, um, did you? It's a great interview there as well. Oh, it was fantastic. I so enjoyed it. I <laughs> really enjoyed him very, very much. And uh, he mentioned that if you strung all, all your, your, uh, your time in the charts together consecutively, it would last over 20 years, yeah. which is quite incredible. <laughs> um, but just this morning, I heard from Absolute Radio, it's Absolute 60s, over in the news station, and they said that they won't play Oh, I heard records. that. Someone told me that. Yeah. Well, well I mean, I'm going to tell you what I said. No, I don't know, but they're lying to themselves and they're lying, more importantly, to the public because whether they like it or not, I started the rock and roll scene here along with Marty Wilde five years before the Beatles. You can't stop at the Beatles. They were a continuation of what my band and I did. They left the country because we, if you read the, the, what they said, John Lennon said, Cliff and the Shadows had it sewn up, so they went away to Hamburg. So in a way, I've often said, we played a major role in their existence because had we not driven them out, if I can use that terminology, they would never have come back and been what they were. They came back and just blew everybody away. But you can't change history. Whether absolute like it or not, I'm afraid I outsold them. When it comes to singles in this country, I outsold everybody else. I'm the number one singles seller in Britain. And I sold more than the Beatles, more than Elvis, more than Elton, more than everybody. So they're being unfair to me dishonest yeah, to themselves and I think even more important I think they're being dishonest to the public the public have a right to know what is historically correct the Beatles did not start it yeah no no absolutely agree I mean do no, you no, think I'm not arguing with you. I'm just saying for, <laughs> yeah. this is my, my words to them is that it's it just goes to show you that they have no concept of reality yeah or trying to create a bit of publicity for themselves obviously well, maybe, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's maybe, maybe. but um do you think it's it's also because you're, you're too nice in a way if you'd um, you know got drunk hit a couple of paparazzi people would view you slightly differently and oh, well, that, would, mean, that would change you know I mean, I their impression maybe. yeah i mean i yeah but i there's no way i'll ever do that no i'm still alive you know a lot of people are sure not even alive you know what's really cool is being successful and alive it's, that's what's really cool. Not the fact that someone died really early because they were overdosed in drugs or, or whatever. You know? And thinking about that, you, Amy Winehouse, for instance, sometimes you feel it's so unfair that someone's so good, life should end so quickly when she had so much to offer. Yeah. Don't make her cool because she was an, an addict to alcohol. Make her cool because she was a great singer. I don't want to. I don't want to lord lord it to, 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 oh my god, she was real cool because she died drunk. I mean, yeah, yeah. to me that's really sadness. I felt, you know, I just felt sad that, that she didn't live the life that she deserved to live with a voice that she had. She had just a fantastic voice. Yeah. And um, I've just now just talked about your, your fan base. I mean, it's so loyal. We've just been uh, inside seeing the screening of uh, your latest Alicia Stevie D, which is fantastic, by the way. Thank you. But um, I mean, how, how do you keep an audience like that so loyal after so many years? I think that, well, I mean, most of us, all of us that have any kind of career have fans that are really loyal. They love everything that we do. They probably love us more than they love any, anybody else, even though my fans will go and see other people's shows. But they'll still be like George Michael will have a group that will just love him better than anybody else. It doesn't mean they wouldn't come to see Elton or me, but they'd still love him best. And we've all got that. To keep any, um, to keep fans you know, around you, you need to be interesting for them. Time. And so therefore I've tried over the years to swing some changes. I did, the, my big first change was moving from the Living Doll style of music, the summer holiday, the congratulations, into Devil Woman, Miss Unites, then the whole succession of stuff with Alan Tarney writing Dreaming, We Don't Talk Anymore. I've then in these latter years done a jazz album last year. This year I've released a soul album with iconic soul singers like Percy Sledge, Frida Payne, yeah, well, the Temptations. Say, which is your, your favourite um, collaboration? Um, I th 
Well, I mean, to me, the, the one that they chose, that EMI chose as a, as a single representation for their album was with Frida Pinkel's Saving a Life. And I, I could hear why. It, that's probably one of the most commercial tracks on the album. But the song that I liked singing best was the one with Roberta Flack, which is uh, When I Was Your Baby. You know, when I, I sang it on stage, but Roberta wasn't available to come over, but I sang it with one of my backing vocals, a very beautiful girl called Susie Furlonger. And she has a fantastic voice, quite different to Roberta. So I didn't say to her, sing it like Roberta. I just said, look, here's the song, learn it from that. And we sang it, and it was just fantastic to sing because the story is about two people who were obviously crazy about each other, and in a way still are, that nothing's really changed. And, and so for me, it's, it's, it's having that kind of emotion to project is fantastic. I loved it. So that probably is my favorite track on the album. What, what about artists that maybe weren't on the album? You, you hinted earlier on at your little your brief um, introduction to, to the screen and that there'd be a Solicious 2. Are there any artists that you would have... Who, who are some artists that you would have liked to have sung with that you... From the had? album? From, from the album and well, maybe for another album. Well, for, well, I've not even thought about another album, but <laughs> from the album, we only sang eight of the songs on stage. Um, six with the, my six guests and two with singers from my backing vocal group. And in fact, Frida Payne's sister was in the backing vocal group and she sang one of the songs from the album and Susie Fellonger, as I mentioned, sang the other. So it gave me eight tracks. Well, there's 15 tracks on the album. So there's a whole bunch of songs there that I hadn't had the chance to sing and I would love to sing them. Uh, there's one track that I love called Go On and Tell Him and it's, I'm singing that with The Temptations, The Re Te Review Temptations. Um, there's a couple of tracks that, there's a couple of tracks I did. The track I do with um, Valerie Simpson, um, Oh, what's the title of it now? Hang on. Summertime is never felt so cold. I can't remember. Anyway, <laughs> that one. There's a whole bunch of them. So, yeah, I mean, in my head I'm thinking, could there be a Solicious 2? And then, of course, my problem would be, would, if I do Solicious 2 and, don't, and didn't ask my friends back, they'd be broken hearted because we had the most wonderful tour. Frida already has emailed and said, oh, I've had, you know, withdrawal symptoms, you know, I can't believe that we've not still doing the show, so, but it's just a, th a th I mean, I often say things at the spur of the moment, and I did today, and I thought, wow, I'd like to do it again, and Definitely. maybe bring in some of these other songs. Quite or maybe just... the answer is to do a DVD. Don't bother about a tour, take a little intimate theatre, and put on a show that we do strictly for a DVD, not available anywhere else. Maybe that's the answer, and then bring in some of the other guests, that would be nice. Definitely. And just on a final note... No, listen, um, this, is not on con this is not in concrete. This is, I, I'm thinking as you're asking me the question. No, as, on a final note, Jimmy Savile just passed away recently. Yeah. If, if he could have fixed anything for you, what, uh, what would it have been? Oh, uh, fixed anything for me. I, I'd like him to have fixed it for me to be able to record with Elvis Presley. Great stuff. And it could still happen because with technology being where it is... Like, did you ever hear what Nat Natalie Cole did yeah, with her father? Yeah, yeah. Used his his voice was there yeah. on the original track, and so maybe yeah that's what I would like Jim to fix for me. Fantastic! Well, it's been a pleasure meeting you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, you again, Thanks. Thank you all.